Hey, Steve Green with Top Cat Fishing Tackle. Um, it is the 31st of March. I am in eastern central Kansas. Our water temperatures are still high 40s, low 50s. Um, crop here is starting to get going. The catfish will be uh, channels and blues are moving out, but the flatheads that I like will really start rolling about 60 degrees. So we're a little bit ahead of the game. I have customers in Texas, a uh, guy by the name of Storm, he sent me some video and they were top catting some fish, but uh, he said their biggest issue was they had bait problems. So I want to cover a little bit about how I handle bait. Everybody does it different. You can find a million different setups for bait tanks on the uh, websites. Uh, I see a lot of guys using old freezers for them. So, but this is what I do, and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. 150 gallon um, stock tank, basically. I take water right out of the hydrant in order to make it safe. I use a product that I get at Walmart called AquaSafe. It's got directions on it, how much to put in. So I'll go ahead and treat that water before I put anything in. In order to make my bait fish comfortable, I put structure in the tank with them. These are just small clay flower pots. Um, just something to give them like, where they can kind of hide and sort of, you know, hang out, hang out. I will also put minnows in my bait tank. Um, I'm going to have, you know, anywhere from 30 to 75 bluegill, bullhead, um, you know, whatever in here. And if you put some minnows in there, something for them to chow on, it makes them a little more comfortable, it makes them a little bit more kind of like, you know, where they're not stressing out type stuff. So uh, in the summertime, as the water warms in the tank, I will take frozen two liters. I will put one in the tank to cool it off. When that thaws out later in the day, whatever, tomorrow, I will take it out, put another one in, and that keeps the water cool. But keeping the water cool, it kind of slows the activity of the fish, and by slowing the activity of the fish, you're going to decrease the amount of waste products, which is going to increase your ability to hold the fish longer. Uh, again, I use the uh, AquaSafe from Walmart. Foam Off is a product that I get at Bass Pro Shops. Uh, it is if you have a large amount of fish in a small amount of water, the secretions in their body will cause a film on the surface of the water. If you've ever seen bubbles, you know, where it, it foams up, once that layer of bubbles or slime uh, accumulates on the surface of the water, you're no longer transporting oxygen through that layer of water. This will very quickly break the bubbles up and allow that oxygen to be able to transfer again from the air through the water. Uh, I always use tap water. I do not ever use pond water or lake water. If pond water or lake water has a color to it, it's because it has dissolved solids in it, dirt, tannins from the leaves and all the stuff that's decaying around the water. So all of the things that are suspended in that water don't allow oxygen uh, to be held in it. So uh, when you start with fresh clean tap water, there's no dissolved solids in it, allows it to hold the maximum amount of water. The cooler the water is, the better um, it will hold oxygen and the better off your fish will be to a certain point. I don't want the water 40 degrees, but to a certain point. Um, in my tank, I use two garage sale just air pumps um, right off of aquariums. Uh, super cheap, uh, simple. I've run pumps, I've run a lot of different things, but um, I found this to be about the most effective. I run two air pumps, two separate air hoses. Um, and two airheads, just kind of a redundancy if something happens. Um, oh, that one's so good. They uh, will, you know, one of them will continue to function. Um, when you have a large amount of bait fish in here, the waste solids are going to be heavier. They're going to go down to the bottom of the tank. I will take, if I'm holding bait fish for a long amount of time, I will take and uh, siphon off or pump off about the bottom third of the tank every three days or so. If you get to the point where you're big fish, the eyes are starting to get cloudy on them, you've gone too far, things aren't really looking too good, you need to kind of pick it up a little bit. Um, for what we're doing with these bait fish, I tell people, I mean, if they're not red hot, they're not really what you want. I want my bait fish to be going absolutely crazy when I throw them in the water. Uh, I had a guy by the name of Doran out of the boat one time, Doran Baker on a guide trip and uh, we'd throw a bait in and that thing would just go crazy and uh, Doran was calling them callers, C-A-L-L-E-R-S because they were active in calling the fish in and Doran would understood what was going on, bought some top cats and he fishes them a lot nowadays. Uh, this is the pump that I use to pump my water out of my tank when I'm switching water out or when I'm done. Uh, it's just a 
submersible multi-purpose utility pump, hook a garden hose on it, plug it in. I take the heavy water out of here, uh, solids in it, and uh, pump it onto the trees and plants in my yard, man, and um, they really seem to dig that. When I'm traveling, this is the airhead that I use um, in the boats. I don't have a live well in my boat for bait or for fish, so I use uh, ice chips, different size ice chips. If me and one buddy's going out and I've only got 20 bait fish, I'm going to use something this size. If I've got three guys in the boat and we're going to go set out 30, I'm going to take something more along these lines of, you know, something a little bit bigger. But when I'm traveling, this is another product I get from Bass Pro Shops. It's Airhead Feach uh, Floating Live Well Aerator. It's from Marine Metal Products. Dude, they're like 30 bucks. It's an bilge pump that floats and um, the things really rock. I've got them with battery clips. I've got this one with a cigarette lighter, but uh, I've used a lot of different pumps over the years. This is what I've gone to when I'm traveling, when I'm trying to keep bait fish alive in, in a tank like this. Uh, I love them. They're great. So that's all I can say really about that. Um, when you're traveling, like when you've got a nice chest in the boat and you're going down the road and it's kind of rocking and kicking, that turbulence, that wave action is going to be putting oxygen into the water. So when you're traveling, it's really not as important to have aeration going as when you stop. When you stop is when you're going to need to have some kind of uh, pumps or something to, to, to make the aeration to keep the water going. I want to show you, as I, uh, I talked about switching out the water, um, as it gets dirtier, as it you know begins to uh, become saturated with the heavy solids from the fish after a few days, I will siphon it off the bottom again with a hose or with a pump. And then uh, to refill it, I will take my chemical, I will put some in my bucket, I will have my hose fill my bucket up to where the five gallon, you know, dump it in, put five gallons worth of chemical in, and go ahead and fill it back up. And so kind of rotate like that until you get it to a certain level. I have a top that goes on this, a net, I never had any bait fish jump out forever, and then I had the tank really full one day, and I came home and I had like nine bait fish outside of the tank. And what happened was Charlie decided he could jump out, and after Charlie jumped out, Sam and Frida and all the rest of them decided they'd go with him to wherever he went. And uh, they went to fish heaven because they were dead on the floor when I came home after that. Now I've kind of made myself a net that goes over the top of it that keeps that from happening. I. Five bait fish sometimes called black salties from a place in Lone Oak, Arkansas, Anderson Farms in Lone Oak, Arkansas. They're a brackish black goldfish and um, they are really, really super good goldfish. Uh, they rock hard and a lot of times I'll buy them when I have trouble getting bait. Uh, their bait fish come with the recommendation that you float the fish in your water to regulate the temperature so that they're equal. If you dump fish from two extreme water temperatures together, they'll end up getting what's called ick and they'll get sick and they're going to be compromised, they're not going to perform the way you want them to. So even when I'm out, if I have a bait tank going and I'm bringing fish in from outside and I know the water temperature in my cooler is significantly different than the bait, the temperature in my tank, I will take the fish, take the water out of there, dump it into a, buck, into a bag, dump the fish in here and float them in the tank for about 15 minutes. That way the water temperatures regulate and it will help your fish to uh, stay going a little bit longer. Uh, I rod and rib fish all of my bait fish and um, sometimes you can go down and you can catch 200 bluegill in an hour on a night crawler and have no trouble or anything you want to throw in the water. Other times it's really hard. When bait fishing gets difficult, I go to crickets. You can find them online. I buy a thousand of them delivered to my front door for 25 bucks or something like that. Um, and uh, when a bluegill will not take a night crawler, it will slam a cricket. So uh, I spend a great deal of time trying to catch and manage bait. The better my bait is, the better my fishing experiences are. So uh, I put a lot of time and effort into it, and um, I want to kind of show you what I'm up to. Uh, again, if you dig any of this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, TopCatFishingTackle.com, and uh, stay put tuned. Man, we're gonna we've got a lot of stuff going this spring. So thank you very much. Take care. Bye.